And my DRZ is dusty, man. That ain't good. Let's give us some gas. I think I'm gonna choke it. Let's fire it up here. Yeah, that has also has not been started in a long time. Well, she is sexy in the looks department. Oh man, I'm so excited to be back on this machine talking about it with you guys. First of all, I'll say if you're a newer rider, an experienced rider, no matter what, if you're looking to get a DRZ400 Supermoto, do it. Don't think about it. Spend the money. Get it. You'll love it. We could stop right there, but we're not going to stop right there. We're going to keep on going and uh, talk about some, uh, some things that this machine is good at, in my opinion. This is all just my opinion and some things that the machine is uh, could be better at or uh, some improvements that could be made i tell you one downside is you become addicted you never want to stop riding like you'll find yourself sleepwalking out to your garage in the middle of the night in your underwear and you'll wake up just sitting on it like you're ready to go i don't know maybe you don't do that but it sure happens to me a lot fun factor this bike is so much fun it handles like a dream in stock form um it's it, it does just fine uh the the dunlops that come on i think they're like dunlop 207s they're not the greatest tires in the world but still they get the job done this is an excellent commuter bike um it's it's nimble you can flick it around uh it gets uh, really good miles per gallon um if you're really hard on it you're doing wheelies all the time in stock form without being jetted still get 60 miles a gallon or better probably um i did jet this i did a three by three and a jd jet kit right out of the gate like when i had maybe 400 miles on it in an exhaust i kind of did all three of those mods at, at once uh three by three jd jet kit and an exhaust um so i didn't run it in stock form very long but um but yeah completely capable machine right in stock trim now this bike is does not have the jd jet kit on it anymore um it, it, it does have an fcr 39 clone uh if you guys have been following along you've seen that progression on the channel and uh this thing this thing rips pretty good uh, we did put that on when it was like i don't know i think we took it on its maiden voyage it was like 12 degrees or some crazy shit like that but uh yeah it's doing fantastic now uh reliability this thing has been 100 100 reliable um the only drivability issues i've had are ones that i've caused myself uh playing around with the carb jetting on that aftermarket carb and that junky ass um jfg shift lever i had on there that the, the ended up coming off on me on that 100 mile ride or 180 mile ride um, so those were self-induced, but in stock trim, I've had zero mechanical issues or failures uh, from stock-related components, none. So um, these things are really legendary for being bulletproof machines and really reliable. And in my experience, in almost 5,000 miles, they have 100% held up to that standard. So uh, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's carbureted. Like, you're going to have to... You're gonna have to adjust the carburetor. Uh, oh my God, this thing runs so good. You're gonna have to adjust the carburetor all the time and blah, 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 blah. Nope, you don't have to adjust shit. You keep it clean. Um, you can empty your float blow if you're worried about it. It's sitting for a, a while. You keep the fuel clean and uh, you ride the bike and maintain it. Change your oil. You'll never have any freaking problems probably. And if you do gotta rebuild a carburetor, it's super simple, man. Less computer crap you gotta worry about. You don't have to worry about uh, freaking injectors and modules and computer stuff and tuning and programming and blah, 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 blah. It does great. I've ridden it, literally ridden it in the snow and ice. I've ridden it when it's 100 degrees outside and it performs no matter what. So for what it's worth, um, 
excellent machine super reliable reliability check but areas i think it can improve uh, i definitely think it could benefit from a six gear that's uh you know that's my opinion everybody knows that the uh, the drz shift pattern is first second third fourth fifth 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 oh nice signal there dickweed um and that's true it it lacks a, a six gear but yeah it uh it runs really good oh hello poodle Ooh, sharp turn But DRZs love sharp turns, dudes. A little two lane ripping. So we mentioned the six gear, I think it could probably desperately use uh, a larger fuel tank. Um, I know they make aftermarket larger fuel tanks, uh, a Serbies or a Cherbies, whatever you want to call them. I know they make an aftermarket uh, rig. Um, but the thing about those, is just in my opinion, is they're just ugly, man. Like these big, gumby-looking things, dude. They just look funky and out of place. And if it was a dual-sport bike or, you know, an ADV bike or something, for me, that maybe that would be a different story. Um, but I'm not, then again, I'm not traveling on this thing, you know, thousands of miles at a time. I mean, I'll do, I can do a couple hundred miles in a, in a little day trip. And, uh... You know, I normally fill up with the FCR and riding it kind of hard. I normally fill up um, about every 85 miles, and I don't even have to hit reserve in that time frame. So, you know, the fuel stops are frequent, but the fun per fuel stop is uh, high. But another positive is the aftermarket following, right? The uh, There's tons of aftermarket components for these bikes. They made a ton of them, so you can get parts anywhere. A comfortable cruiser, eh, it's comfortable with the seat concepts seat. Without the seat concept seat, uh, go out to your fence in your backyard, throw a leg over that, and uh, have how that feels on your ass. That's kind of how riding a factory bike feels with that narrow seat. Um, so it is not the most comfortable in factory form, but the seat concept seat, I know it was an expensive upgrade. It was like 300 bucks. Definitely worth it in my opinion. So if you're going to get it and you're going to put miles on the bike, I mean, if you're doing, you know, if you plan on riding 20 miles a day, no sweat, stock seat will do you fine. If you plan on riding 50, 60, 100 miles or more, I would probably definitely put a seat concept seat on it. And it sounds good, man. This thing freaking barks. It's like when I was a kid, I always wanted a dirt bike that I could ride on the road. And that's exactly what this is. It's a, it's a dirt bike that you can ride on the street. So all of the, you know, nimble agility that you get from a dirt bike, boom, you got it right here in your daily cruiser. The factory headlight sucks. Um, standard halogen bulb. Uh, I honestly think that's probably one of the first things you should do is put a JNS engineering headlight in it. Um, I did get the JNS engineering headlight that's the Morimoto version. It's the more expensive one, but it, the light output's pretty good. Uh, the light output's really good at night. Um, but yeah, headlight, I think, is, is an absolute must, especially if you plan on riding at night whatsoever. Uh, that JNS Engineering Morimoto headlight, by far one of my absolute favorite upgrades on this thing. And 100% stock form, man. The bike is fine. Is, is it the most attractive? Nope. But is it the most functional? Yes, it's probably one of the most functional machines that you could, that you could own. I mean, it really just ticks every box from a functional standpoint. Not a lot of, there's, there's really no luggage or storage compartments on here. You do have a factory little tool, tool kit in the rear. Um, if you choose to keep it on, the tool kit that it comes with, yeah, that's, that's maybe a plus, it comes with a tool kit. The tool kit that it comes with is functional. I know the stuff in it kind of looks funky and 
generic, but you can definitely probably take 80% of your bike apart with that toolkit they give you, including changing tires and wheels and all kinds of stuff. So uh, one thing I didn't like about it was the uh, how bright these indicators were at night. Um, sorry, I don't know if you can see it. How bright these indicators were at night. So we put on, uh, we added that. Let's do a let's do a turn around here. Oh, hello, guns. Uh, worked with a buddy of mine, kind of came up with this design here, and we 3D printed these uh, covers and went through a bunch of variations. But that's actually made out of rubber, um, so it's flexible. It's actually working out really well. I don't know. I think I might start selling those things. This bike is so much fun. I mean, it just, you have a smile on your face the entire time you're riding this sucker. But this bike, you know, I think it remained unchanged from 2005 all the way up to the current 2023 model. This is a 2022, but all the way up until the 2023 model, they're, they're relatively unchanged with the exception of graphics kits. Um, very minor tweaks here and there, I think. But, um, but yeah, overall, solid what's up cool guys man they wave man i'm in the cool guy club see and if you're on a drz you get to be in the cool guy club but if you're on a scooter i don't know man they might not wave if you're on a scooter you know i'm showing that i'm at 87 miles right now i wonder if that means i need gas i haven't ridden this thing in like months so I think 100% that means I need some fuels. And there used to be a gas station right here. Guess what? It closed. Let's see if I can get cool guy number two. Yeah, brother. Hello, no turn signal. What up, tractor? I waved at the tractor and the dude in the Mini Cooper waved at me. What up, Mini Coopers? The DRZ maintenance schedule is as follows. Oil gas loop your chain that's pretty much it so if you're not uh super mechanically inclined this is probably also another good option for you I'm not downshift or anything, but it's just got plenty of grunt, even in top gear, just to zip up hills. No problem. It takes off good, handles good, and stops good. Those are three very uh, crucial, crucial boxes it ticks. Oh, please see me turning there. Don't run into me. Oh, hello, turns. turns up Take this and the uh, the Banshee bike and race them. pleasure to ride upright seating position you're not all slumped over and your back doesn't hurt you know for old people
people like me. I hit a deer on this bike doing 50 miles an hour. 50, five zero. And the only thing it did was I kicked the deer's ass. Now these bark busters acted like uh, brass knuckles and I sucker punched that deer in the mouth. See, stops good. Everybody will look at you because you're on a dirt bike. Buy one, you won't regret it. We did manage to go 98 miles without uh, hitting reserve.